Plankton rules the world. And yet, he still can't get that Krabby Patty formula. Hey everybody, thanks for watching DNews Today. I am Trace. The EPA's website calls phytoplankton the grasses of the sea. And zooplankton are so important that they feed tons of ocean species, literally tons. Plankton do so many things, our planet literally could not survive without them. Plankton is an umbrella term for millions of tiny marine and freshwater organisms which drift around Earth's waters. Plankton can describe algae, bacteria, protozoans, crustaceans, mollusks, and solenterates. Within plankton, there are two main groups, phytoplankton, which are plant-like, and zooplankton, which are animal-like. But this division isn't perfect. These ancient organisms challenge how we define what a plant or an animal even is. Some are described as protists, which is a whole other kingdom of life. Regardless, there are a lot of them, like a lot. Plankton make up 98% of the biomass of the Earth's oceans. The largest surviving animal on Earth, the blue whale, scoops up and eats 8,000 pounds of krill, which is a type of zooplankton, every day. And yet, there's still plenty to go around, because tiny fish and shellfish will feast on various plankton species too. Plankton are also essential for us up here, where we walk, where we run, where we stay all day in the sun. As phytoplankton suck in carbon dioxide to make oxygen, which is great for everyone who enjoys breathing in whatever part of the world you're looking at, according to some estimates, phytoplankton produce 50 to 85% of all the oxygen on our planet. And yet, no one talks about plankton. Without plankton, our whole planet would suffer. Even the sky. One of the major features of Earth's upstairs, other than its characteristic blue color, are all those puffy white things floating around. New research in the journal Nature found phytoplankton are essential for ice crystals that form clouds. See, clouds are formed of droplets of condensed moisture, but that moisture needs something to condense around so it can then form the shapes of massive turtles trying to eat my third grade teacher's giant hair. According to this study, these phytoplankton, which is an ocean organism, remember, are thrown into the air by the constantly slapping waves and ocean spray. Once in the air, phytoplankton provide a place for ice to form. And with enough ice and water, poof, you get a cloud. Though, phytoplankton mostly affect cloud cover nearest the poles and in remote ocean regions. Earth clouds regulate how much precipitation, cloud cover, heat blocking, or heat trapping occurs across the entire surface of our planet. Thanks, plankton. Plankton are so omnipresent, even astronauts cannot escape their reach. Unconfirmed Russian reports from last year say that they discovered plankton on the outside hull of the International Space Station. According to the Russians, uplifting air currents could carry these things to the ISS, and though they may not be alive in space, it's debated, they're still up there. Unfortunately, human activity is screwing everything up again. A 2010 study in Nature found phytoplankton populations have dropped 40% since 1950 thanks to warming oceans. With what we know about phytoplankton, the loss of it could disrupt so much of the life on our planet, it is difficult to comprehend all the implications. But with new research, we can enhance climate modeling and our understanding of global ocean systems thanks to the understanding of these tiny organisms. Plankton are a food source, an oxygen source, they affect the weather, they absorb carbon from the atmosphere, and they show up everywhere on Earth. They're like superheroes. I mean, a microscopic ocean organism may have reached space. That is simply mind-blowing. Can you think of other organisms that affect our planet so much? You know, other than us, of course. Tell us in the comments. Plankton might be incredible, edible, and everywhere, but the ocean can still be deadly. In this video, Dr. Karen Bondar found a beach in Florida where flesh-eating bacteria has killed people. Check that out. First, we can contract it by eating raw or undercooked seafood like oysters. And second, it can invade our bodies through pre-existing lesions like cuts or scrapes. Or and speaking of Karen, that reminded me. I am really excited and actually kind of nervous to announce D News After Dark. It's a D News show live on stage here in San Francisco. We'll be kicking off the Bay Area Science Festival with a nerdy night of science and laughs, emceed by me, but featuring D News' favorite people, Karen Bondar, Crystal Dilworth, Amy Title, Natalia Reagan, Joe Hansen from It's Okay to Be Smart, Brian Brushwood from Scam School, and of course, Julian and Julia will be there too. We'll be talking about incredible science for our first stage show ever on Thursday, October 22nd at the Castro Theater here in lovely San Francisco. Check the link in the description or we have a Facebook event page for more information. It's called D News After Dark. I would love to see you there. Buy tickets. Thanks.